all of my future Discord JS videos are going to use my worn off keys commands command handler. So I'm making this video as an entire guide or video documentation on how to use this project so you can effectively follow all of my future videos in this series. Now, the first step, of course, is to install Warnoff Keys commands by using the npm install command. This will give us access to using this library within our entire project. After that, we want to import this within the top of our project, and we also want to import the path package as well. From there, we can go ahead and set up Warnoff Keys commands within our client's ready event and pass in the directory where all of our commands are going to live. We now want to create a commands folder and include a ping.js file inside of that folder. This folder is going to contain all of our commands, but we're going to start with a simple ping pong command. The command setup is actually pretty simple. We first have to provide a description, which is required for slash commands. We also have to provide a type, which could be both legacy or slash. In this case, both will create both a legacy command and a slash command. We also have a required callback function, which is invoked whenever the user runs this command. All of your command logic can go inside this function, and whatever object or string you return will be sent into message.reply or interaction.reply, depending on if this was ran as a legacy or slash command. Let's now create our add command in a very similar way to our ping pong command. The main differences here would be the description and also the callback function. In this case, we're actually going to loop through every argument that the user passed in and add it to a sum variable and then return that sum variable. The main reason for this add command is that it is much easier to demonstrate all the possible command properties and the options you have within your callback object within an add command that does take in arguments compared to the ping pong command, which doesn't take in any arguments. So with that said, we're about to dive into all the different possibilities you have within your commands. And if you want, you could skip this step in the video and just simply read the documentation. It is up to you. Let's start off with the command usage object, which is passed into our callback function. Here we can access the Discord JS client, the Warnoff Keys commands instance, which has these use cases from time to time, the message, if this was passed in as a legacy command, the interaction, if it was passed in as a slash command, and note that only one of these will be valid, the other one will be null if it was not used. We have args, which is every non-commands name word that the user typed in, separated by spaces. We have text, which is the entire string that the user passed in, minus the command name. We have the guild, or null, if this was passed in with a direct message. We have the member. We also have the user, we also have the channel, and we have cancel and update cooldown. Let's now take a look at the different properties we can have, such as aliases or the reply boolean. These two specifically refer to legacy commands, and aliases are just a different way to run the same command, and the reply boolean will determine if we are going to use message.reply, which will tag the command sender, or if we just want to simply send the reply within the same exact channel, which will not tag the command sender by default. Next, we have test only, which will make this command only work within the test servers that you specified. I'll explain how to set those up in a few minutes. We have guild only, which will effectively make it so this command will not work within direct messages and only within servers. And then we have owner only, which will make it so only you and other developers that you whitelist are able to use this command. This has nothing to do with server owners, and I'll explain how to set these owner IDs in a few minutes. Let's now take a look at min and max args. These will determine how many arguments your users can provide. By default, the minimum is zero, and by default, the maximum is negative one, which means no limit. So in this case, the user is forced to provide two arguments, no more, no less. Now, whenever the user enters an invalid amount of arguments, it's going to respond with a specified message here. We can specify the expected arguments as num1 or num2 in this case. Obviously, you can change those per command. And the message that is actually sent to the user is specified within correct syntax. 
In this case, we added in prefix, command, and args variables within the string, which will make this look like exclamation point add space num1 space num2, and those values are being taken directly from the configured prefix for this guild, the command name, and finally the expected argument string directly above. We can also specify which Discord permissions are required to run the command. In this example, we require the administrator permission. You can also apply cooldowns very easily within Worn Off Keys commands. One property to pass in is an error message where a time variable will be replaced with how many hours, minutes, seconds, etc. that the user has to wait. You also have to specify one of the following options per user, which is going to be per user anywhere, no matter if it's direct messages or guilds, per user per guild, which is going to be any specific user in the guild where they ran that command, per guild, which will be all users in the guild where the command was ran, and then global, which is all users across all guilds. You can also see a couple examples of how to specify the times here. You can use an integer, which will be amount of seconds, or you can specify your duration, such as hours and days, by passing in a string. When working with slash commands, you might want to defer the reply. You have three different values to pass in, false, which is the default state, true, which means a publicly visible reply will be deferred, and ephemeral as a string, which means that a hidden or ephemeral reply is going to be deferred. Next, we have an init function, which will be ran passing in the Discord.js client and the worn off keys commands instance whenever this command is registered. This is often useful if you want to reach out to a database or an API. When creating your own slash commands, you can pass in an options array. However, what you're looking at is what worn off keys commands will generate for you given this exact command. It will use the expected args string and the min args integer to determine what values should go in here under the hood. For example, the expected args string has num1 and num2, as you see from the options array. And the required Boolean is true for both of these elements because there are only two of them. It's important to note that if you do not provide an options array, then one of these commands will create this object here with every type being a string. Of course, passing in anything into the options array will disable the default options being created and will only use the options you specified. If any of your options require autocomplete, then that could be handled within the autocomplete function. You'll receive access to the command, the current argument, and the worn off keys commands instance. From here, you're expected to return an array of strings, which we pass back into the interaction and provide it to the user as their possible options. Finally, we have the delete command, which is going to delete this specific command once your bot restarts. It's important to note that when working with slash commands, if test only is true, then it will only delete the local slash command registered to your test guilds and not the global command. To delete the global command, you have to have delete true and test only be false. When creating the worn off keys commands instance, you can pass in the bot owners as a string array. These are people like yourself or other coworkers that you're working with on this project. And this has nothing to do with the people who are actually running the servers or own the servers that are using your bot. An example of when this could be useful is a set status command where only yourself as the bot owner should be able to use that and not anyone else. You can also pass in a test servers string array, which is gonna make all of your test only commands only work within these specified servers. In the case of legacy commands, they simply won't do anything in other servers. And in the case of slash commands, a local guild-based slash command will be registered to these servers. Keep in mind that this will not affect any previously registered test-only or global slash commands. Validations have two different types. Syntax, which is ran against every command whenever it is registered when your bot first starts up, or runtime, which is ran against the command whenever a user actually runs that command. To demonstrate this properly, create a validations folder in the root of your project, and then inside of that folder, create two folders, 
one called syntax, the other called a runtime. Here is a simple example of a runtime validation that will only let the command run if its name starts with a letter A. We have access to the command, the usage, and the prefix to add in whatever logic you want to determine if this command should be ran or not. Obviously, this isn't a real example, but you can add in your own runtime validations if you want. Here is a simple example of a syntax-based validation that is actually built into one of these commands. This is going to receive the command itself, which you can then access all the information, and you're expected to throw an error if something goes wrong. If everything is fine, then nothing needs to be returned, and the code will execute as expected. One of Keys commands doesn't just handle commands. In fact, you can register your own events in a very efficient way as well. Simply pass in an events object, which contains a directory property to where your events are going to be stored. Here I create an events folder, which is where we just hold one of Keys commands where all of our events will live. Within that, you can create a folder for any Discord JS event you want to listen to. It's important to note that these folder names must exactly match the Discord JS event name. I also created a log messages file within message create. That means that whenever message create is fired, log messages function will be invoked and passed in the message data. Here is an example of how to properly log messages using this event system. As you can see, the message object is passed into our arguments, and that goes for every single Discord JS event. All of the arguments that we passed into the event are passed into our functions here. And the only exception to this is at the very end, there is always an instance of the Warnoff Keys commands handler in case we need to access some of that data. Let's now take a look into dynamic event validations, which are an easy way to clean up your event code before your code is actually ran. In this case, we're passing in an event validation for the message create event. So whenever that type of event will be fired, it first has to pass the is human check. As you can see, the arguments for the message create event are passed in, and then we have our own function, which in this case is just returning the opposite of whether or not the user is a bot. Now, if you pay attention to the command structure, here I created an is human folder within the message create folder. In this case, the function within log messages that we just saw will only be ran if is human returns true, therefore meaning that we are now only going to log messages sent by actual users and not by any bots. This is a fairly simple example, and of course you could argue that this isn't worth it just for one if statement, but you can add in whatever dynamic validations you want before your events are actually fired. A lot of features you're going to have in your Discord bot don't necessarily have to be ran with a command or an event. In cases where you want code to just run whenever your bot starts up, you can pass them into a features folder. For example, I just created a features folder, which is where we just hold worn off keys commands where all of our features are going to live. Now, every single file and nested file within this folder is going to be ran when the bot starts up. As you can see, we're given access to an instance of the Warnoff Keys command handler and also the Discord JS client. That way, we can perform whatever operations we want within the feature. We can also provide a global cooldown configuration, which will apply to every single cooldown unless specified in each command. In this example, we're passing in a global error message. We also have a bot owner's bypass as a Boolean, in which case that will look at the bot owner's string array and will make those users bypass any cooldowns. We also have a number of seconds, which will determine how long the cooldown has to be before it is stored to your Mongo database for persistent storage. That way, if the bot restarts, the cooldown isn't lost. By default, this is five minutes. And finally, one off keys commands comes with a number of built-in commands to make it easier to run for the server owners. However, not everyone likes these types of commands, so you can disable them if you want. Simply pass in disable default commands as an array and pass in whatever commands you want to disable. 